Warning! Read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. So today we're going to talk about AccuLock S with the dual locking liner. Um, and we're going to compare it to conventional style liners that we've used up until this system was released. And just kind of talk about the benefits of why the dual locking liner, you know, typically can outperform the, the standard conventional liner and, and some of the, and, and why we typically see a consumable life increased. So starting off with what has liner technology been, so the conventional style. So this liner basically is going to load from the rear of the gun, uh, and this goes with pretty much any manufacturer. Um, it's going to come through, you're going to measure to whatever that spec should be, and you're going to cut it. And then what happens though is you have all this play, right? It's floating on one side. And because it's floating, as you manipulate the cable, the liner's moving around. So you can see how the gun's coiled up on this table, but you can see here how the liner's actually moving significantly. So let me straighten the gun out and show you what, what just straightening the cable will do. So now basically we have the, the cable straight on the ground and you can see significantly less movement. That amount of travel is gonna depend on how your cable's manipulated. So let's put it in more of a working style. Get it kind of in a coil near my feet, um, bend it over like I was gonna to weld, and you can see how much movement there is, okay? So what we wanna do is eliminate that, um, because basically what's gonna happen with, when your liner's moving away and you have unsupported a wire, you're gonna experience drag, uh, burn backs, um, bird nesting, you know, all the problems that we face in our day-to-day -day, uh, life can be caused just from the liner. Basically what we wanna do, again, is, is eliminate this, and what we did was we came up with this AccuLock S system with, with the dual lock liner. So same thing, you can see the, the gun here is coiled up, and you can see we have a ton of movement. The difference is we're gonna load the liner from the front to the rear, and by doing that, uh, what's gonna happen is this liner lock that's crimped on is gonna stop up against the neck. It's got a positive stop, it can't, cannot suck in. And then when we put our diffuser on, it's also gonna eliminate it from being able to push forward. Our liner to tip distance is gonna be set. There's no way it can move. And on top of it moving in and out, it also is gonna align the wire to the tip. So as you can kind of see here, when the liner falls out of its spot and it's got nothing to support it, it's gonna actually spring up towards the top of this bend. So by doing that, it's not actually centered to the neck. And what's gonna happen on a traditional style liner is now the wire is gonna have to pull that liner down and it's gonna drag across it as the wire feeds through the tip, uh, assuming that the wire is strong enough. If it's not, um, you might actually be forcing the wire to do this. If the wire doesn't have enough strength to pull the liner down, it can, it can actually do this kind of motion and now you're, gonna, you're just gonna wear out tips real fast. So when we put our diffuser on here, what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna align this because it's all machine fit. Um, it's gonna align it and stop it from going in and out. So right there in itself is a ton of benefit. So I'm just gonna put the diffuser on here and we're gonna tighten it. So I just typically go hand tight and then snug it. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing with the tip, hand tight and snug it. And then we would put our nozzle on as well. So what we did was we took that problem from the front of the torch and moved it to the rear. So now you can see we still have all this problem at the back end of the torch. So let me straighten this gun out as well. And now we have less, less movement, right? Cause the gun is as straight as it can be. We're gonna put this cap on. So all of our power pins are gonna be two piece caps or two piece power pins. So we're gonna have a cap and a, and a body. But what, why we did this is cause this cap actually has a, an O-ring inside or actually it's, a, it's more of a silicone washer. And that's gonna be our gas seal. So when we put that over the liner, it's gonna seal itself to you know, prevent gas from leaking out the back. That washer is also color coordinated. So we color coordinate all of our liners to match the wire size. So like a white liner is gonna be 035, 045, and a red liner would be 045 to 1 16th, for example. So that, it's important that the cap matches the color of liner. So when we put that on, um, again, we're gonna basically create that gas seal. And this, the set screw is actually gonna push and bite into this liner jacket material, and that's gonna help grab it. So we're now this is, why, this is the dual locking. So we locked it at the front, 
Now we're going to lock it at the rear as well. Every Bernard torch, with, when you order it with AccuLock S dual locking, is going to come with this in the box. And basically all, all we got to do to tighten it is just we're going to snug that down so we're going to feel the resistance once that set screw um, hits, you know, pushes against the liner. And we're going to give it half a turn and then we, we know we, we're locked. So we're more worried about the liner sucking in than we are pushing out. So I'm going to step on the cable and I'm going to twist it maybe about five times, five rotations, which is more than I could ever want to weld with. It's very knotted and, and there's a lot of stress on my wrist right now. But I can see that that liner hasn't sucked in. It hasn't moved at all. So at that point, I know that this, this is all set properly. So basically um, what's going to happen if this does suck in is you're going to have all the same problems, maybe even amplified, where you're going to have unsupported wire at the back of the gun, and then it's you know you're going to have a hard time feeding it forward. You're going to have burn backs and and chatter, or all, just all kinds of problems that you experience. So it, this is very critical. This is the one thing that I you know you have to make sure is done properly. Tighten this hand tight, and then um, you know if you want to snug this, there are, there are two wrench flats here. If you want to make sure that it's got a got good tight seal and then set that set screw. And then uh, do your twist test and you're good to go.